Welcome to lecture 46, method overloading. So we've already seen method overloading in action without actually realizing it. Method overloading is basically the idea of having different imp implementations of a function, but the functions have the same exact name. So you have different versions of a function with the same name. What I mean by that is, for example, if you look at console.writeLine, console.writeLine has many versions. You actually can see it has one of 19. So by just opening this parenthesis, I can see some information about the, uh, about right line. And it's saying that there are 19 different versions of it. By going through them, I can see that, okay, the first version takes in a bool value. And it, uh, it can print a bool value. The next version, it can print a character. The next can print a character array. The next, a decimal, double, float int so the console.write line can print out all types of data to the console and the way it does that is by having all these different versions so every different version can print out a different thing this one we use a lot the console.write line string this can print a string u int u long string format and now we have now running into different things but there's all different types of um, versions that we can use to actually print to the console and that idea of having different versions is called method overloading or overloading in, in general. So what I want to do for this lecture is make that adding um, example again. However, I want it to be able to add two integers together, but I also want to be able to add two strings together. Now, when you add two strings together, it does um, different things. We could make it that, okay, you could pass in strings as an, I mean, yeah, you could pass in numbers as a string then convert it into a number and do the addition. Or we can say, okay, if it's a string, just combine the two strings together. Don't add them together, just combine them and concatenate them together. So it has it does different things depending on the different arguments. Now there are also some rules that actually define method overloading, and we'll get to those in a second. Let's start out by making the adding calculator. So we're going to do public static void add. And this will take in an int x, int y, we'll say. And we'll just add them together in answer equals x plus y, and then we'll print it to the console answer. So this is our, fir for our first version, version of add. So if I do add 5, 6, we can see if I run that, it prints to the console 11. If I try to right now go add hello world as a string, I'm going to get an error because it's saying that there is no version of add that takes in two strings. There's only one that takes in two integers. So to actually overload, the rule is the function needs to have the same name, so public static void add, but the parameters need to be different, either by type or amount. So if I have a different amount of parameters, that'll be okay. Or if I have a different uh, type of int or a different type of parameters, that will also be okay. So in this version, I'm going to say string x string y. So now I have a different version. Now the return type is not a big enough difference, meaning if you have this function and then it returns an int instead, this is not a big enough difference as an overload. The the, the rule is to method overload, it needs to have a different signature, and the signature does not consist of the return type. So this is not okay. They have the same parameters, so the return type is the only thing that's different, and that's not enough to actually overload. They need to be different parameter amounts or different data type of parameters. In this case, it's the same amount of parameters, but they are different data types, so that's okay for overloading. Now for this, I'm going to say string answer equals x plus, I'm going to add a space plus y. So this is called concatenation. Oops. This is called concatenation. We saw this a while back. It's basically combining strings together. So I'm combining the first string with this empty space plus the second string. So now it just adds them together. Whereas this plus is actually doing the mathematical equations and it's actually going in and adding the two numbers together. This is just combining the strings together. And then I'll just go ahead and print out answer. So they do different things, but they're both called add. So now you can see this 
this error went away. And now it says, okay, there is a version of add that takes in two strings. And I can prove that by going add, open parentheses, and now it says there are two versions. Remember, console.writeLine had 19 versions, whereas our, program, our function called add only has two versions. One version is int x, or takes in integers, and the second version takes in strings. So I only have two versions right now. Let's go ahead and add one more version that does doubles. Let's say we wanted to add decimals. Right now we can't do that. We can't go add 5.5, 6.6. We can't do that right now. So in order to do that, I'm going to add another overload. I'm going to say public static void add double x double y double answer equals x plus y console to the right line answer. So now, boom, that error went away because now there's a version of it. If I do add like that, we can see now it says there's three versions of add. One is a double, one is an int, and one is a string. There's three versions. And that's what overloading is all about. All these three separate functions are completely different functions, but they all have the same name. So for the user, they only have to type in add, and they could then pass in any type of information they want. They could be strings, doubles, or integers, and depending on whatever it is, it will pick the correct function to use. But to the user, it all looks like one function. That's why when we use console.writeLine, it all looks like the same function depending on what information we pass in. However, behind the scenes, it's really doing different, different versions of it. And if I go peek this definition and look at console.writeLine or the console class, you can see we're in right now, we're in the class called console. You can see right line has all of these different functions there's all of these different versions of right line and depending on what information is actually passed into it it will pick the appropriate function and run the code so we thought that we were actually running the same function over and over but it really is they're all separate functions depending on the information and that's basically the idea of method overloading